Hey, this is Andrew Dombeck, and we are on the PPT with AID podcast. Today's guest is Connor Mully. Connor Mully is born and raised in Ashburn, Virginia. He is a 2006 graduate of Broad Run High School, and then he went on to play baseball at the powerhouse St. Peter's College in New Jersey, and then went on to uh, be drafted in the 24th round by the New York Yankees. Uh, Connor and I go way back. Um, I've done a little rehab with Connor, just a little bit. Uh, how are you doing today? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, we've done a little bit of rehab. Probably, uh, what, maybe 75% of my career was uh, <laughs> rehab, I think. So you and I spent a lot of time together. We spent, so. a, lot of, we spent <laughs> a lot of time together. So, so explain to me and explain to the audience, um, you went to college to be a position player, right? Yeah, so um, you know, I I, uh, I was a shortstop. Shortstop was my first love. Um, you know, uh, didn't get many looks out of high school. Um, ended up sending out a bunch of tape to a bunch of different uh, schools on the East Coast. Uh, St. Peter's was one of the schools that responded. Um, they at the time were, uh, I think they were five and forty-five. Um, <laughs> so great opportunity, uh, you know, for playing time. Hopefully, if, if everything went well. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, so I got recruited up there, played four years of shortstop um, before I uh, ended up switching over to pitching. What made, what prompted the switch to pitching? What, how did that come about? Um, you know, I, uh, I, uh, shortstop was, I could see it coming to an end. You know, I always had a good arm. Um, you know, I, I had gotten some looks professionally as a shortstop, but I don't know if I projected uh, well to the next level as a, uh, definitely at my hitting. Um, I don't know <laughs> if I was going to be able to catch up to, you know, 95 plus. Um, so, you know, a scout pulled me aside one day uh, and uh, told me to get on the on the mound, and the rest was history. Hit 90 a few times. I hit two guys. Um, <laughs> you know, it was it wasn't the prettiest thing. I didn't have an off speed pitch. I was just throwing fastballs, and uh, and after that, you know, then teams started reaching out and took off from there. So. You get drafted. Where were you when you got drafted? What was that like to know that your name was announced? I mean, 24th round, that's huge. Yeah. Um, so, you know, scouts had told me possibly top five rounds, even top 10, which looking back was crazy. I only <laughs> threw like six innings, so they were definitely, you know, blowing smoke. Um, we had, I went to a few pre draft workouts uh, with a few different teams. And, uh, you know, I had a good feeling that I would get drafted just on projectability. Uh, and uh, we ended up, um, it, was, it was a little, little nerve-wracking because uh, we threw a little bit of a draft party. And back then there was 50 rounds. The first, first three rounds, I think, was day one. Day two was four through 30. And day three was 31 through 50. And so the day was ticking along, the rounds were, were going by, and, uh, you know, luckily in the 24th round I had my name called, uh, you know, as a senior sign. I, no one called me to let me know they were drafting me. It was just, you know, I saw my name pop up and, you know, some scout called two days later. I was on the flight to Tampa. Um, it was really exciting, a uh, great moment in time, definitely nerve-wracking, but it was, it was an awesome feeling for sure. How was that being drafted by the Yankees? I mean, your dad was from Queens, your, your aunt Eileen. Um, I know your aunt, your dad, um, they were from Queens. What was that like to, like to be drafted by their team? Yeah, it was awesome. You know, the Yankees, obviously, it's everyone knows them. Um, you know, it's probably them and, uh, you know, the Cowboys, right, and in, in, uh, in the Lakers. Uh, you know, so it was really exciting. Um, you know, the Yankees were one of the first teams to reach out to me. They, they may have been the first team to reach out to me, so it was pretty cool that it kind of came full circle, um, you know, and got, got drafted by them. So that was, it was awesome. So once you get drafted and you're heading down to Tampa with your whole six innings of pitching, what was that like transitioning to becoming, you know, you weren't going to be a, a, a starter, obviously, having six whole innings under your belt. What was that like? What kind of help did they give you um, to make that transition from infielder to uh, pitcher? 
Yeah, so rookie ball, um, you're on a schedule. You know, a lot of a lot of rookie ball, um, which is the first level of the minor leagues. Uh, there's a lot of younger guys, 18 year olds who just drafted out of high school. Guys like me who they're converting. Um, you know, so you're on a set schedule. So they had me pitching every three days, uh, piggybacking off of one of those starters. So I knew the days that I was throwing, um, which helped because then I could prepare a little bit more. You know, as a reliever. As I progress through the system, you, you never know when you're th- when you're throwing. You know, you got to be ready to go every night. Um, so it was nice, you know, that first year having the the set schedule like a starter would, um, you know, to, to in order to prepare a little bit better. As I you know was just learning the position, pitching is a completely different world than than position player. Yeah, what is that like? You know, being out on the mound, it's like mano y mano. It's <laughs> the pitcher and the batter. No one else is in the in the screen. You know, on the shot, it's just you. What's going through your mind? What is that like being out there? And at what point did you get? A, I'm I'm assuming you got another pitch more than a fastball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it's exciting. Uh, the the adrenaline's definitely pumping. You know, all eyes are on you when you're on the mound, and, and you know it's just you versus him. Uh, you know, a, a coach told me one time, uh, you know, act like he's going to be taking your paycheck, you know, because that's what he's trying to do. So, um, you know, it, it's it's a tough, tough business, um, you know, and, and yeah, I, I had I had multiple pitches, um, you know, fastball uh, command, I think, you know, is the most important. Uh, and, I, and I felt like I had that pretty, pretty well um, down. Um, and that threw a changeup and a slider. Um, you know, the slider took a little bit longer to develop, but that was the pitch that took me, um, I would say, over the top. You know, once I consistently was able to throw a, a slider for a strike um, in any count, that that's really when you know things took off. So that was your strikeout pitch was a slider. I, I like to use my slider to righties, and I would use my changeup to lefties. The changeup um, tailed away and had and bottomed out, um, you know, away from a lefty. So I generally like to do that. I, don't, I, I was always kind of mixing it up, um, but slider was probably my go-to uh, off-speed pitch, yeah. So tell me more about like the journey from, you know, you're in the minor leagues. What happened? How long were you down in the minors? What was the process going, moving forward? Yeah, so when I, after I was drafted, I, I was brought down to, to Tampa again, um, you know, learning a new position um, pretty quickly. I think as I developed, um, you know, as I got more comfortable on the mound, my velocity started to pick up. Um, I could tell that people were starting to pay attention. I still didn't have an off-speed pitch, but I was throwing 95, 96, 97. Um, so that's going to, you know, people are going to notice that anytime you're doing that. Um, and I was able to locate pretty well. Um, so that first year, you know, took off. Um, and then unfortunately the next year I started having elbow issues, um, you know, and that carried on for three straight seasons. Um, it was a long three years. I only threw five innings in three years. Um, I can remember after 2013, after the third surgery, telling my dad that I was done, um, you know, I was ready to move on. He said, give it a little bit, a little while longer, ended up going back worked my way back up through the system at that time I was 26 years old and I still hadn't pitched above rookie ball and I still had only thrown 30 innings in my life so you know it had to had to pick it up <laughs> didn't have much time to to adjust um but uh yeah and then you know slowly started getting the velocity back you know obviously you were a big part of that and um you know you know the rest is history you kind of yada 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 the whole like I went from my, you know, rookie ball all the way up to, you know, five years later. I'm, 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 <laughs> so at what point, you know, because a lot of pitchers, you know, uh, Tommy John has become a huge, huge issue um, with overuse, especially in the youth athlete. I see that a lot. You know, you got, um, you know, what happened? When, how did you know? And did you have any control over saying, hey, coach, I need to come out? my elbow's bothering me or it's like, hey, I need to do this and pitch until my arm falls off because this is my one shot? You know, I probably put too, a little bit too much pressure on myself that first spring training. Uh, I started having issues then and they could tell that there was something wrong. I was My velocity was down, um, but I kept trying to throw through it. I was 23 years old. I felt like you know, if I wasn't out there, then, you know, they were going to forget about me, um, which, again, I, I don't think that that was the case. I probably should have rested, but I kept throwing through it. 
Um, unfortunately, that probably did more detriment to my arm than than uh, you know than I wish would have happened. Um, and from there, I, I tried to do the plasma rich therapy. Is that is that mm-hmm. the term? Yeah, 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 the PRP. Yeah, um, you know, sat on the sidelines for a while with that. It didn't really do much, and that's when we decided that Tommy John was was the answer, um, which you know is common in in baseball. Um, you know, especially for someone throwing mid mid nineties, you know, who hadn't thrown before. I think that that's kind of how that happened. For those of you that don't know what a Tommy John surgery is, is there's a medial collateral ligament that uh, attaches essentially your humerus, which is the arm bone, to your forearm um, and to your ulna. And oftentimes with pitching, and it happens a lot in, in youth athletes because they're trying, it used to be that they were trying to throw breaking balls too young in life and puts a lot of strain. Uh, oftentimes we see it as a mechanical issue that, um, and I think when I remember talking with you, you know, you got down there and pitched and you were just throwing on pure athleticism. They, did they really give you any instruction on arm care? Did they give you instruction on, you know, getting your arm in the right slot, getting your body in the right position, working you, you know, making sure you have the proper mobility? Did they do any of that with you or were you just a commodity to them? Um, yeah, you know, they didn't, it wasn't just, I mean, they put me on a schedule once I started, you know, again, I was a senior sign, so it was kind of a, you know, let's throw this at the wall and see if it sticks type situation. And, you know, pretty quickly it did start to pick up. So they did put me on a regiment. Um, I didn't, I probably wasn't on enough of one, you know, to strengthen certain parts of my shoulder um, that I had never worked out, right? I Previously, before professional baseball, I'd only worked out as a position player, and it's a little bit different, um, you know, especially at St. Peter's. It's not like it was, you know, Miami, uh, <laughs> you know, or something, Clemson. Um, so, you know, again, I, I only knew what I knew. And so, um, you know, they definitely – you know, they, they were on top of their stuff, but I don't know if my arm was just was ready for, you know, the torque that was going to be put into, you know, from pitching. So you, you decide to opt for the Tommy John. The Yankees choose Dr. Andrews or you chose Dr. Andrews, who's a famous surgeon out of Alabama. He also has a place down in, uh, in, in Florida. You go and have the surgery and then you come home because you're making – ton of money in the minor leagues i'm being sarcastic <laughs> as a 24th round draft pick like what you know how much was your signing bonus by the way can you tell us yeah it was uh two thousand dollars two thousand what did you, did you spend it all in one place or you hey, know? that was more than the one thousand dollars <laughs> that a lot of guys got yeah, that a lot of the other senior signers got um yeah and again the uh the minor league salary at least at the time you know uh, was not much i think in rookie ball it was twelve hundred dollars a month so you were getting like six hundred dollar paychecks wow uh, yeah. We're, we're going to come back to that because I, I want to I, I want to ask about the minor leagues because you really didn't experience the minor leagues too much because you got that injury pretty quickly. I want to transition. You had the surgery. You come back home to Ashburn. How did you wind up in my office? Yeah, so the way I recall, again, it was a decade ago, but the way <laughs> I recall was uh, you were in the same facility as my dad's office at State Farm. So we went in there originally – I had never been injured before. I had never done any sort of rehab. We went in there, talked to you. It felt like a home run. We we checked that with uh, Eric Schmidt, um, who you had worked on before. He's you know with the Yankees. He's high up in in their personnel department, and um, and you know from there it was you know it was like this is the spot. So um, you know we had looked at a couple different places, and and that was um, that's how we ended up. You know, I, I, to be honest with you, it's been over a decade and I didn't know because uh, I, I took notes and stuff and I, I didn't know that was Eric Schmidt. Um, I thought it was like Taylor Clark's mom or something like that that came. I can't remember when at what point Taylor Clark is another broad run alum who's now mm-hmm. uh, pitching for the Diamondbacks. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, I remember um, in my outpatient uh, setting, I remember treating Eric Schmidt and we had a, a pretty good, he went to Wake Forest and then um, he had a pretty good minor league con- career. Um, and I think, you know, I, I, bl- I remember selling you guys, I mean, I in school I'd trained uh, a big time, like probably first or second round draft pick out of the uh, Cincinnati Reds, mm-hmm. as well as like um, another, I think it was a Braves pitcher and, and had some experience when I was in Kentucky working with Tommy John. Mm-hmm. Um, guys, so you came back, you, you worked with us. Um, t- 
take me through what happened with the rehab. How, how, what was the process? What was, you know, what was special that I did versus, you know, cause uh, people don't know this. You had, you mentioned it kind of, you alluded to it. You had three elbows. Yeah. I was gonna so say, which one, which yeah. one? You <laughs> the first, the first about? time, you know, <laughs> I remember them all. I mean, yeah. You know, the, the first one was, you know, Tommy John, um, you know, very famous, uh, injury or, or, you know, the, the surgery, um, I tried to attack it like I would anything else and you know baseball always came easy to me in terms of working at it uh, you know trying to get better I just had a love for the game when I got hurt I knew I had to go in with you know 100% that mentality of you're gonna get back and you're gonna get back faster than anyone else has gotten back um, you put together a schedule for me that uh, you know it was customized to what I needed to do you know there's a lot of other people in there doing different things um, and it worked, and you know I think that you and I, pretty quickly, uh, the chemistry, you know, the back and forth. I knew you knew when to push me. Uh, I knew you know when to avoid you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. and keep so, those plastic tools away. <laughs> <right>? Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you know I, th I think it, it worked out really well. Um, you know I was in there five days a week, four four or five days a week, six days a week. Uh, so you know, again, it, it was my job. So. I didn't see it on my end as anything extra that I was doing. It was just, you know, if you want to continue the dream or the chance to, to have that dream, you know, you had to do your put in, put in the work and you held me accountable. I, I mean, I remember you, I didn't know, like they, when you get injured playing baseball, it's actually a workman's comp injury. And um, oftentimes with workman comp, you have to get authorization and they had to authorize how many visits you were allowed to do. Well, I just knew, like, hey, this guy wants to get back. We're doing five days a week. I didn't get authorization. I was like, let's do this. And then told them, you're going to pay for it one way or another. Um, but uh, we went through the rehab. I mean, still to this day, I've been in business since 2006. You are the hardest, one of the hardest working athletes that I've ever patience, everything that ever worked um, work with, which is, you know, a credit to you and the perseverance. Um, you know, I myself, you know, never played college athletics. I got injured my senior year, I hurt my back and it was done. And I knew my life's work was going to be making sure that if anyone else went through an injury that I wouldn't let them go with, you know, lose their dream. And I always wanted to push them, you know, and it wasn't just the the physical therapy, but there was a mental part to it, right? You know, I mean, we spent a lot of time together. Tell me about, you know, what else did I provide or what was provided besides the physical therapy part that kind of helped you along the way? Yeah. You know, anytime anyone's rehabbing, it's never, it's not a fun atmosphere right normally right it's not a fun atmosphere no one wants to go do rehab whether it's you my know, place is great what are you trying right? to say yeah. we have a bowl, we have a ton of <laughs> yeah, right. can't wait to go to rehab today torture uh, <laughs> yeah you know but I, I do think that you have an atmosphere in your facility that that you know opens up to that you know or, or you 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 have people yourself the people you bring in um you know who are working for you um, you know, it was always fun, right? We're always talking about fantasy football. We're talking about, you know, different things. You're asking me different lineup stuff. I'm like, I can't help you this week, okay? Um, you know, things like that, that that make it a little bit better, right? It's never fun doing rehab. It, it was a long, I, you know, just still thinking back on just how many hours of rehab I had to do just to, you know, just to try and get, you know, some more innings on the mound I couldn't I can't even believe that I did that much rehab three straight years um but you know again it was always it was always easy when going to your place I mean in terms of showing up um you were I knew you were going to work me hard you know harder than most places would and I knew that you know the Yankees had offered me you know to go down to Tampa but I knew I was going to be able to get the work in up here um you know just as much as being down there so um it was never really a question well, I appreciate that. That's a lot of, you know, huge vote of confidence. I, so I remember we worked out and I remember we became more than just client business. I remember you kind of helped us. We were on vacation. How tall are you? 6'4". Six, 6'4". Four. Six, four. So Connor was living at his parents' house because that sixteen or $1,200 a month, you know, salary wasn't going to get him much, especially in Ashburn. I remember we'd go away and we offer you to come, you know, hey, why don't you sleep at the house? Mm -hmm. what, what did you do for us at the house? You know, what... 
I tried to take care of the dogs. <laughs> I think that there what was a couple, dogs, how there was a couple <laughs> accidents that I think I tried to clean up as best as I could. Um, how was, what was your question? They're, how big were the dogs that you took care of? Yeah, they're, they're tiny. Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I, I grew up with Mastiffs, so I, you know, I, I had no idea what I was doing with those. We, those we had a, a Maltese and a Japanese chin, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Six four Connor walking yeah. around the neighborhood. <laughs> with one dog in a purse and the other yeah it was it was an interesting week that's for sure so i i remember you going back and i i think i think you you advanced pretty well i remember you were pitching like you were throwing harder than ever when you got back tell me what happened next like i remember you pitching you pitched like 10 innings and you were throwing harder than any guy on the staff when you got back after this tommy john what happened next um yeah so i came back um i did have some bicep soreness i think that that was just again uh, something that i should have once i got back down there i should have told somebody about it i kept it to myself um you know i just would massage i learned how to massage my arm you know to (laughs) without having to need the trainer um (laughs) I think that's just pitching in general. You gotta you know, work through different uh, sore, sore, sore arms. It's not a natural motion, but uh, yeah, I was five innings in. I uh, finally had gotten to a uh, an affiliate up in Staten Island, the Staten Island Yankees. Um, it's a really cool stadium. They got a, the New York City skyline in the in the backdrop, uh, and um, I, I was throwing a pitch, and I just heard a, a pop. Uh, it, it, I was throwing hard at the time. Um, and the ball just went flying over the catcher's head. I knew as soon as I threw it that something went wrong. Uh, my elbow blew up, um, you know, the size of uh, an orange, and I knew it was going to be a long road to <laughs> try and come back from that. So th- this happens again, and, you know, I was following you. We, we talked and following everything. What was it that made you come back to us? You know, did they try and send you somewhere else? Did you, you know, or just like, hey, he got me here the first time? What, you know, what was going through your mind at that point? Yeah, I don't think that there was ever any hesitation on going back to to work with you. I think that, I think it was a freak accident. It happened to like three people ever or something like that. That's what Dr. Andrews had told me. Uh, you know, what he did, again, this is my um, opinion on it. When I had my first uh, ligament tear uh, it was a partial tear so from what I understand and you might be able to answer this better but from what I understand they left the ligament in there they took the new ligament out of my forearm and double wrapped that ligament and when they do the Tommy John they do a figure eight through your bone and so how I understand it is that it was almost too strong and then it ripped the bone off on a pitch again I don't know, you know, I, I don't think that, that, that there was never any, like, you know, I wish Andrew would have pushed me a little, you know, there was never any of that. It just, I think it was just a freak accident. So, of course, right away I said, all right, well, I'm going to go to my guy to, yeah. to rehab the second time. I, I wasn't aware of, you know, the, of the partial tear. I, I mean, that's bad on me. You know, maybe I, I don't, it's been, like you yeah, said. Yeah, you probably uh, had it in I your records. I probably had one in my sure. records and stuff like that. And I, I remember um, coming back, and it, it was a little bit easier in the sense that, when we came back the second time, you knew the drill. So there wasn't, you know, initially, you know, five days a week, but eventually it was just like, hey, I'm going to work out with you a couple of days, you know. And so tell me what happened, you know, midway through, you know, we're going through the rehab. What happened? Was there any setbacks or anything like that? Yeah, it felt like um, you know, they had, so they had put a screw in my elbow and reattached the bone chip that, that chipped off. And pretty quickly, I think we both realized, and, and I had a bone stimulator that I was trying to use on it, pretty quickly realized I'm not going to be able to throw a, a baseball, let alone you know play catch with my kid one day or, or do anything. Um, so that's, it was, it was a setback you know, pretty quickly after I had had that second surgery that I didn't even get to playing catch or anything like that, that we realized we may have a problem here. Um, which we then, that's when the th- third surgery came. <laughs> yeah, they was, I think they said it was called a non-union. That, the is that bone, what it is? Yeah. yeah, it was a non-union. They tried to reattach it, uh, the original bone, and it just didn't take. It didn't heal for some for some reason or another. It, it wouldn't take. Um, and I remember, remember you know, um, talking with James Andrews uh, about it, and 
they uh, he's like, hey, we're gonna remove the bone and we're gonna reattach the ligament to to the elbow. Um, I can't remember when they told me this or not, but um, coming back from this was gonna be an uphill battle. Tell me about what now? What was your psyche like? You know, hey, this is a second surgery that happened within, you know, two years. Yeah, um, looking back, it was definitely um, it was it was it was a huge setback. I mean, I I thought I internally, you know, I, I always try and think positively, but I knew that I was 25 years old. Uh, you know, I, I had that third surgery. I remember it was on Valentine's Day, and you know, I was turning 25 in a, in a week, and I hadn't been I hadn't I'd thrown five innings. I'd thrown 30 innings in, in my life, so. Of course, you know it was mentally it was it was exhausting and and um, you know but I I just tried to tried to stay positive, I, I, knowing in the back of my head that this might be it, but I'm gonna still give it the best shot that I can, and then I started getting ready for possible um, Plan B and and I started uh, I went back to school. So, you know, one of my the the processes that we do and especially from working with Eric and some other other people is that you know the hip mobility your balance your strength of your legs because the power generated and throwing isn't from the arm and that's probably that's why the injuries occur is because people are overthrowing with their arm and not they're not using the 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 force of their legs pushing down through the ground using their core and their hips to throw the ball what other stuff did I add to your program that kind of got us to the next level um re so rehab wise like um you know i think that a lot of the i don't even know if i'm using the right terminology with the deceleration type of exercises i think was huge um you know i know that's big now you know with with baseball these days they're the weighted ball um stuff is coming around for healthy pitchers it was starting to come in when i was uh in the minor leagues and um, now I know it's kind of a, you know, a really big part of a lot of different people's programs. Um, so a lot of the deceleration uh, exercises, um, you know, I know you and I were out there uh, throwing the football. Um, you know, I, I had no idea that throwing the football would, and I, I still don't remember exactly why we were doing that. But it, again, I remember it was something to the effect of the way that you throw the football is different and it, and it would help build something in your, in your shoulder. Again, I, I, a lot of the stuff I did, it was because, you know, you said, hey, this is going to help you. And so I, I would, uh, you know, I would I would do it. Right. I mean, you know, I'm going to listen to you. You're, you're yeah. The, I, you're I, I mean, I remember um, doing some research because, all right, this is our third go round and this is it. Um, Dr. Andrew said no one has ever returned to pitching professionally after the surgery that you had. No one. No one has ever done this. So I remember doing research and I think there was a. A guy that was, you know, I want to say it's in like the Pacific Northwest. That I read some article that, at, a, at an older age, he had who was a pitching coach, and then to a high school team, and he went and take took this class, and they were working on throwing a football and throwing a ball in a in a in a pillowcase, working on deceleration, mm -hmm. eccentric control, slowing the ball down to help kind of you know major thing that that we work on is like working on back muscles and, and shoulder sta stability, that kind of stuff. Um, and just, you know, that's one of the things I do. I want to be able to, my practice is evidence-based. So what is the evidence that is out there? And this guy had all of a sudden went from being a high school coach to the next thing you know, he's throwing and he's going to a random tryout. And the next thing you know, he gets signed by, um, I think it was Seattle or something like that, because all of a sudden this guy at, 35 or whatever is throwing 95 miles per hour he never threw this fast as as a as a youth player it was just never he didn't have that and he attributed it to this program and so i was like man if it worked for this guy mm -hmm. it's got to work for you um and i remember you know we we came in and you know i had a uh you know i would talk with tim who's a trainer with the on a regular down at at, at uh tampa and with Dr. Andrews and, you know, Dr. Andrews, as once we started throwing again, he was like, no one else is allowed to catch or throw with Connor but me. And I don't know if anyone knows this, but I never played baseball. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I was kind of scared of, of, of the ball. I mean, I was an athlete, but I never played 
baseball. So initially, I remember we were going out. We are on the grass besides uh, the Greenway out in Ashburn. And, you know, they're, like, throwing some rainbow tosses and stuff like that. And I'm like, Connor, show, Connor was showing me kind of, like, different – grips on how to throw the ball and stuff like that and he's like hey hey, you know you're starting to throw a curveball you know relax and we slowly 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 started backing up and you know i can throw a catch a lob but then you know this is a guy that is pitching in the majors next thing you know we're throwing 50 60 yards and all of a sudden the ball's got some movement on it and and i was just like crap you know i can't ca- i can't continue to catch for this guy i need to you know recruit so from there, we went and, you know, everything else. You were so diligent in doing the work. Um, so take me from now we've finally rehabbed this. We're pitching. We're thrown from a mound now. Now we're back in the majors. Or not in the majors, but in the minor leagues. Tell me about that. Tell me about that experience of being in the minors after going through all this rehab. How did it go? How did you make it from – and I don't know if you guys know this, but Connor – Connor got his got a got a sip of coffee at, and and you know with the big with the show, and so tell me between you know what was that like to go from this guy who had three elbow surgery that was said that no one will, no one's ever come back from this injury to you let alone pitching professionally, but making it all the way to the pinnacle. Yeah, uh, you know after having you know only thrown five innings in in uh, three years, uh, it was. It was a long road, right? My first bullpen, when I had the radar gun on me, throwing live, I was throwing 84 miles an hour. So I had, I knew I had a long way to go. I remember after that bullpen saying that, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to, oh, you know, I talked to my dad and said, I don't think this is going to work. You know, they're going to release me tomorrow. I'm throwing 84. Uh, and uh, I can remember the first milestone hitting 90 again. And just, you know, slowly the arm strength was coming back. Uh, at this time, I was 26 years old. So I, I knew that it was, it was, you know, I was backed into a corner. It was now or never. And from there, you know, again, I, I, I just had a natural ability to throw strikes. So even though I wasn't throwing quite as hard at that time, uh, the, the command got me through at, at first. And then as I continued to develop through, the, through single A and double A, uh, you know, I, I had a fastball and a changeup. I was still working on my slider. And then once my slider came around, uh, that's when, you know, in triple A, I started doing really well. And, and that's when the call came in 2016. So you skipped some steps there. I mean, we probably you went what you you were down to Tampa and then I think you went to to um I think Charleston or something like that and I think we still had a role. You know, I was still I was invested. You know, we've done this three times. Um, you know, tell me about some of the stuff that I did for you uh to keep you on the mound, to keep you throwing. What were what was some of the stuff that in particular that kind of helped you out? Yeah, so it was, it was, uh, you know, first of all, I think you and I talked often about how I was progressing, right? My day to day showing up to the stadium was different than most guys because I had to get there, you know, five hours early in order to just to be, to be able to throw because I, it took me a lot to get ready. So you and I were always in constant contact. Um, the biggest thing that I think we continued to, um, to do was, uh, the dry needling uh, helped. Um, that was uh, huge, um, you know, in my progression through uh, the later stages of my career. Just it just changed the game in terms of how I felt, uh, you know, on a daily basis. And I knew I had to get it every four to six weeks. Now I was fortunate that the Yankees uh, affiliates, the, the different teams, were all on the East Coast, so I, I moved. From uh, most of my career was Trenton and, and Scranton, so I wasn't too far away where I could get some dry needling done before I got up to New York. Uh, so that was that was fortunate. I remember coming down for you. I think it was the year you were. I think Double A the year before, and went down to spring training um, down in, in Tampa. I was down there a to I think see see you, and I remember. Um, tell me what it was like. What were you going through when you're down in Tampa and you're still minor leaguer? What was it like? What were the living situations? I mean, my understanding with minor league ball players, there's guys that are below the poverty line. Like, there's guys that are making less money than the people selling beer and hot dogs in some of these stadiums. Mm-hmm. So, 
what you know I, I remember coming down and it was like hey let's get a needling session in you know um take me through so what was that experience like you know to live you know to be that minor league pitcher yeah you know again in, in the minor leagues there's a lot of different guys right there's guys like me who had a two thousand dollar signing bonus and was grinding through on six hundred dollar paychecks at the beginning you know when you get up to triple a i think it was you were making like twenty seven hundred twenty five hundred a month uh but then you're playing with guys who were first and second rounders who signed for millions of dollars. So it's a completely, it, it's a, you know, it's, it's a crazy mix of individuals. Uh, you don't think about it too much when you're playing, you know, it, it, it's, it's, we're, we're all chasing the dream. You know, I didn't mind living with four or five guys, uh, you know, from, in apartments that, or, you know, six guys. I remember in double A, we had like six or seven guys in an apartment. You know, three of us were in the living room. Two, uh, two, you know, two guys were sharing a bed in the back. It, it didn't bother me, you know, as long as the one guy would, you know, talking to his girlfriend on the phone for, you know, until <laughs> midnight, you know, just, you know, we'd tell him to cut that, cut that out. But, uh, yeah, it never really bothered me. Uh, it's interesting, though, that the, the different, uh, you know, everyone's on a different path, right? Everyone's on a different status trying to get to the same place so i remember i was down there and then there was a huge ascent you went from double a AA to triple a and we would be talking and i'd follow your statistics online and you were kicking butt down in triple a i think you probably had one of the best eras in all of minor league baseball at the time you know, were you, what was your mindset at that point where you were like wondering, you know, am I going to get my shot? What was that like? You know, when did you get the call? What was all that about? Yeah, so I think uh, I think that when I was in AAA, uh, again, I, I had developed the slider and I felt there's a confidence, right? There's a confidence that you, once you feel like things click, it's hard to explain exactly, you know, what happens, but something clicked. And there was a confidence when I when I went out on the mound that you know every time I went out there I expected to to get outs and get you know and go three up three down. That didn't happen every time, but uh, yeah, uh, you know I think that the biggest thing was the confidence started to pick up. You know, again at that time I still was, uh, you know, still still young in in the pitching world and, and you know not age wise but as a pitcher. So as I continued to develop my pitches. Uh, you know, the confidence started to grow, and, and that's when, you know, kind of that, that next level came. Didn't you have a little um, – I, I remember we didn't get some strength. W what role did the strength in your pinky play in your in your pitching? I remember you not having full grasp, and we talked about that, the way you held the ball, that you got some sort of extra spin because you couldn't fully grip the ball with your pinky. What was, Tell me about that. What was – uh, yeah, I think that uh, my grip strength uh, was a little bit of an issue, but I had, you know, after three elbow surgeries, uh, but I guess, yeah, it definitely helped my change up. Uh, you know, when you throw a, a good change up, it's supposed to roll off your fingers. Uh, and I think that helped uh, the change up definitely. So I remember getting the call. I was so excited for you. Tell me what it was like, you get the call, you're going you're going to the show. Not only are you going to the show, you're going to the Yankees, the premier club in Major League Baseball. What was going through your mind? Tell me about the first time you got to put on the pinstripes. Tell me about, you know, how that go? Tell me tell me about the first time when you took the mound, all that. We want to hear that. Yeah. Uh so I got the call. I remember you know, I started to to get the feeling that there was a chance that I may have an opportunity to be called up. Uh the you you start scoreboard watching a little bit in terms of when you're in, in the bullpen right and then there's you're looking at the Yankee game they're they're you know down 11 to four probably using a decent amount of relievers they might need a guy who knows he did that you know every everyone in the bullpen was doing that you know you're checking the game and then you're checking and you're watching the game out there um, so after that game they lost like 11 to four something like that you know again didn't really think anything was coming. I remember going back to the apartment, ordering Domino's pizza, <laughs> and uh, you know lived off Domino's pizza a lot in the minor leagues. And I got a call from my manager, and he said, uh, "You know what are you doing?" And I said, "I'm waiting for a pizza." <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, okay, see ya. No, and then he said, uh, "You know, we'll start packing your bags because you're going to the Big Apple." Is exactly what he said. So of course I was excited. Uh, 
I went over to our, our adjoining apartment. There was another guy who got called up, Chad Green. He's still in the big leagues. <laughs> uh, great pitcher, great guy. Uh, and so we got to ride up together the next day. It was a, a day game uh, at Yankee Stadium. We were playing the White Sox. And I knew that there was a chance that I could possibly throw because I knew that they were light in terms of availability. Got A lot of guys had been worked. So that game, uh, we you know, putting on the pinstripes was obviously amazing. Uh, their clubhouse is, is unbelievable. The stadium itself is unbelievable, the, the facilities in, in general. So I put on the pinstripes and... Uh, and we went out to the, you know, I went out to the bullpen, surreal moment, you know, Yankee Stadium, obviously it's a little bit different than the minor leagues, you know, that holds 10,000, yeah, yeah than, than the uh, 50,000 plus. And that first game, I remember I had to get up because uh, Dylan Batances had gotten into some trouble. You know, at that time they had Dylan Batances who threw in the seventh, they had Andrew Miller who was the eighth, and they had uh, Raldis Chapman in the ninth. So they had the back end covered. It was they were trying to fill the sixth, the fifth, sixth in case they had to. They had that bridge guy. So uh, that game we were up or tied, and Batantis went out and he got into trouble. And at this time, I'm, I don't, you know, <laughs> <coughs> you know, they're not gonna call me. It's Batantis, and he, you know, they said, hey, you know, Malik, get up, and I, you know, started getting loose. I think I threw like 40 pitches, just you know, adrenaline's just going. He ends up working out of a jam, and, and then Beltran hits his 400th home run that game. Uh, and so I end up getting to sit down. <laughs> um, you know, uh, it, it was surreal. Uh, I didn't end up throwing in Yankee Stadium at that point, but then we went out to Arizona, uh, cross-country trip, uh, and I ended up throwing Hold on, out before there. you jump, yeah, I remember a story. What happened when you got on the plane? What, they, what kind of pranks did they play on you? Pranks uh, on the plane? I don't know if there was any didn't, pranks. Didn't they tell you where to sit and you weren't supposed to sit where they told you? To oh, sit? that was on the bus to, oh, the, the, bus. to the airport. Yeah. Well, I just sat down. You know, I didn't. I didn't want to sit in anyone's seat, so I just sat by myself, and I ended up getting my own seat with no one next to me on the bus. And so then everyone started giving me uh, <laughs> crap about that. You know, like the rookie gets his own seat, and well, I mean, I can sit next to a Chapman, or I can sit next to you know. Um, Beltran, you know, neither one of them wants to sit next to me, so of course I'm going to take the open seat. You know? <laughs> what am I going to say? Oh, can you move your stuff? <laughs> so they were they were cool about it, though. You know, it was funny, and you know, of course I just sunk down in my in my seat and couldn't wait to get to the airport. But was was Jeter on the team? No, no, Jeter was not. He retired the year before. Um, I met him when he was rehabbing the year before, and you know, when I was down there in Tampa. But um, yeah, he was he wasn't on the team. All right, so you finally get your number called. You're in Arizona. What happens? Um, yeah, so Chad Green, the guy who I got called up with, actually started the game. They had needed a spot start. Uh, he had a little bit of a rocky first outing, um, and so I knew that there was an opportunity, right? They're going to try and get the rookies in in a not a high-leverage situation. So I knew that there was a good chance that I would get in. It was like five, six, seven to one, something like that. So uh, I knew the opportunity might be there. Uh, you know, uh, as soon as I started getting, as soon as they called me to get up to get loose, I knew it wasn't a, you know, I might go in next inning. I knew it was, it was happening. Um, and it was, you know, it was an awesome moment. Um, you know, that first jog in and, on, uh, at Chase Field, uh, which is actually where Taylor Clark plays now. Uh, you know, it, it was really cool. And, um, yeah, it was an interesting inning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not as clean as I would have liked, but uh, yeah, you know. Got, no, no, got don't my skip feet the wet. good parts. Tell 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 the audience what happened. Yeah, I remember I walked the first guy, <laughs> and then uh, you know, then I bounced back, struck out Goldschmidt, which was awesome. You know, he's a great player. Um, you know, so that was really cool. Save the ball. I still have the ball. First strikeout, um, and then. Then it gets a little gray. Uh, <laughs> a couple more walks, uh, and then I actually hit a guy to bring in a run. So I had three walks and a hit batter, one earned run, no hits. And, you know, I ended up getting out of the jam um, with, a, with a ground ball out. But, uh, yeah, so I, I have a, you know, I had a, an ERA. I, I never gave up a hit in the big leagues, but I have an ERA. So it's got to be some sort of record. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what happened? So then you got to pitch at Yankee Stadium. What was that? Like? Yeah, so I got sent down uh, that night, or, you know, the next day. Um, <laughs> you know, again, not surprising. And I went and pitched, and I, and I did well when I went back down to AAA. Um, 
I think I threw 15, 16, 17 scoreless, something like that. Got my second opportunity, did well, went three up, three down against the Rangers um, in the ninth inning of a seven to one game. Again, not, not a high leverage situation, but. Um, I bet you struck out Desmond, didn't you? Yeah, I struck out um, uh, Shin Chu. Uh, Sin Chu was was who I struck out first. Then I struck out Desmond, and then I got uh, Adrian Beltre to fly out. Um, I'm lucky he didn't put it over the wall because I missed my spot. <laughs> so, one of my biggest regrets was never getting to come up and see you. You know, I was, you know, but you never knew. You're like, hey, when are you going to be pitching? You know, you're, you know, a rookie up there. So take me. What happens? You know, you're up with the with the Yankees. You know, I think it was the year that they were kind of selling off everyone. I think they or Chapman. I think they shipped somewhere else. It was kind of a fire sale because it was a it was a losing cause that year. So, you know, what was going through your mind? You know, hey, I can I can stay up here. Then what happened? So I got hurt. We went out to San Diego. Then after that uh, series against the Rangers, I got hurt out in San Diego. I couldn't feel the ball coming off my fingertips. Um, I had been pitching well to that point, uh, but it, it just something uh, I lost feeling. So I went on the on the tw- on the ten day DL, and then I, I tried to work my way through it, uh, you know, in that series. And then when we went out to Chicago, and uh, pretty quickly I could tell that there was something more wrong than just you know a, a, a quick um, you know day to day thing. And they ended up putting me on the sixty day, and and uh, there was. Uh, scar tissue from my first three surgeries that had built up and I lost and, and so they had to go in and clean it up and is that what you asked me <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah. so then next thing you know what happened you come back to me this is the fourth time we're back to Andrew um, to, I remember we we rehab this I was in, in contact with the the PT up in New York and the surgeon that was up in New York through the surgery and I remember it was uh, you know, um, this is a funny story, and then we're going to move on to something else. I remember um, you left. You know, you just went up to New York, and I think you got cleared by the doctor. Said, hey, you're all good to go. Come back in. A couple, you know, a couple of days we're in PT. Next thing you know, you walk out the door. And all of a sudden, you know, Connor comes walking back in. Yeah. And and this was, this was I think, what was it? It was the Cubs versus... Who in the World Series? Uh, Indians. The Indians. Cub versus Indians. Yeah. So I, I, uh, um, yeah. This is in October, early October. Um, rehabbing. I just gotten cleared to start playing catch, and um, I had just left your facility. I was out in the parking lot, and I got a call from Brian Cashman. He said, uh, you know, hey, you know, how's everything going? I told him, you know, we, we talked for a good 10, 15 minutes. Told him how everything was going, and. Uh, he said, who are you rooting for tonight? And I said, um, you know, I guess the Cubs. It was game seven of the World Series. So I said, I guess the Cubs, um, you know, they haven't won in over 100 years. And he said, that is good because they just claimed you off waivers this morning. Um, you know, you're a Cub now, which was crazy because, you know, it was game seven of the World Series. So you know, I had a rooting interest at that <laughs> point. And I'm glad I said the Cubs. Uh, you know, so that was really, that was pretty exciting. You know, again, it was the end of an era for me. The Yankees had been really good to me. They gave me an opportunity that I think a lot of clubs might not have. Uh, you know, a guy who hadn't pitched that much, who got, who went through the injuries that I had. So that was, uh, you know, it was a little bit of a sad moment, but also an exciting moment in terms of, uh, you know, going to a, an organization like the Cubs, right? So it was, it was pretty cool. And then I came back in, told you, <laughs> and then I think I had to go make, you know, a hundred other calls. <laughs> so the, yeah i remember the cubs going world Roman series i'm like are you gonna get a ring you're like no you know i'm on the cubs but i wasn't on the playoff roster i didn't you know qualify for that i was damn you know but um so then we continue your rehab you go back out tell me what happens and i think you go out to arizona and then um you know for sprint training and and yeah I've, um, you know, I think that for for me, you know, fourth elbow surgery just was the one that, that did me in. Uh, I just, I, I ne- the grip strength was so weak at that point. The ball just never felt the same in my hand again. I tried throwing through it. Um, it just never, I, I, I didn't have you. the same stuff. That's all right. So we now we're done with baseball. We decided that, hey, I don't have the velocity. I had my 
you know, I had my, I guess the expression, I had my cup of coffee. Not many people can say that they got to play, you know, let alone a 24th round draft pick, three elbow surgeries, one that no one has ever come back and pitched professionally, let alone make it back to the major leagues. And you did it. You, ex- you know, you exceeded all expectations. You come back. Now what? You're back home. I know now you're a financial advisor. Um, Tell me about what you've taken from your experience as a professional baseball player and use that towards your, you know, your new business. Yeah. Um, you know, once I decided that I knew and, I, and it was it was just a feeling that I, I knew I wasn't going to be able you know, you can't you can't try and cheat the system in terms of getting people out in the big leagues. You know, you either have it or you don't. And I could feel that I didn't have it anymore. So that's when I had made the decision that you know th- this this career is over. I need to move on to to the next um, you know part of my journey. So um, you know becoming a financial advisor, um, you know it, it was a it was a great opportunity. Um, you know I, I I put in a lot of work with my clients. I um, you know I get to I get to help people try and achieve their long term goals, right and. My long-term goal my whole life was to try and become a Major League Baseball player. Now, different goals along the way, but now I get to try and help people with their long-term goals, um, you know, whether that's retirement or college savings, um, you know, things like that. So, um, you know, it's very fulfilling. Um, you know, it's a lot of work, but uh, I really love what I do now. It's not quite pitching for the Yankees, but it's, it's, it's a close second. <laughs> no, but you've taken, you've taken some of that experience. My understanding is Jason Bagby, two bags, um, has a baseball facility played a big role in uh, even the guy at T- we're at T Pow Studios and and I know um, before this podcast Cole and I were talking about you know how Jason helped him hit uh, improve his hitting and stuff like that. Jason played a big role in your career as I know as an infielder. I don't know how much he did with that, but you decided to say, hey, I want to give back. You know what can I do? So tell me about. You know what are you doing? You know with the youth athlete now. What are you What are you doing now with the pitching and stuff like that? With your experience? Yeah. So Jason Bagby, um, you know, he was my first. I was his first lesson. So he was one of my first. You know, serious baseball coach. Uh, he was the guy who I went to anytime I was in a hitting slump. Anytime I, I needed advice on, on the baseball field or off the baseball field. You know, he he was a, a huge, huge mentor in my life. Um, uh, he has a facility now, two bags. Uh, I do some work over there with some pitchers. Um, you know, it, it's it's a great facility, and and uh, you know, in order to get your work done, and um, you know, I, I think that uh, that you know, I just I really enjoy giving back to you know the game that that did so much for me. Now, what lessons are you teaching the youth to try and like as far as you know, I, I you know I work with you and I said, hey, when you go back. This is the pitching mechanics. I never played baseball, but I studied baseball, studied golf, and they're very similar in the mechanics as driving through the ground and trunk rotation, hip rotation, that kind of stuff. And the arm care, I remember telling you, say, hey, you've got to do these exercises. What have you been passing on to these kids that you're now mentoring as far as we need to do this or, you know, prevent to prevent, Mm -hmm. you know, you got this big... This yeah, I, sh- I show it to everybody to scare them so that they <laughs> <laughs> that they uh, you know take the, the the preparation seriously. But I think um, you know I think a big thing that I took from professional baseball is routine. Uh, getting a routine in order to get yourself ready for uh, the first pitch of the game or you know for whatever position you're playing. You know you can take that to any part of of you know sports or, or life in general. You know making sure you stick to that routine. Um, you know, preparation is huge. Um, doing different band work, pre and post workout is something I talk about a lot. Um, you know, just making sure you're getting some of the muscles engaged before you go out there, and then also after. Um, you know, is something I I'm, I'm sure that you know I have to annoy these kids sometimes because I talk about arm care probably more than any other pitching coach that they've come across. Um, just because I I know how how much being on the you know being hurt uh stinks right so um i I harp on that a lot i mean loudon county is very affluent and every the intensity of the parents is just paramount of my kid has got to make it to the next level 
and there are so many kids that are having still overuse. Some of them are even having Tommy John surgery on purpose because they wind up throwing harder after the Tommy John than they did prior to. Um, you know, what have you been saying to some of these kids as far as to get them to like, back off because it's it's so competitive i know you know my daughter had her acl tear and she's specialized in soccer and i you know i know not to that three sports is better than one sport my daughter's stubborn i'm stubborn she, i wonder where she got that from um but with baseball you know the parents are so it's such a competitive thing what are you telling these kids to say you know how are you getting them to like slow down because it's like you know, this guy is getting pitching lessons mm -hmm. all the time and throwing and playing on the high school team and three different travel teams and stuff like that. So, I mean, when I got my first Tommy John surgery, I was next to a kid who was 13, couldn't have been more than 13 years old, 14 years old. I mean, that's that's not, you know, we got to try and, and do what we can to, to avoid that. You know, anyone who says that Tommy John makes you throw harder, Tommy John, I don't think, makes you throw harder. I think that the sh the shoulder strengthening you know when you get Tommy John you're not just doing elbow strength you know elbow forearm strengthening you're doing shoulder strengthening because a lot of from what I understand shoulder weakness leads to elbow you know you're you dropping your elbow and then there's elbow issues that come from that so the reason that a lot of these guys end up throwing harder is because their rehab forces them to do certain shoulder strengthening exercises and then they end up throwing harder so a lot of these people want to take a shortcut that you know tommy john makes you throw harder well it can if you you know if you do the right rehab afterwards but it's not the the the, the actual cutting of the elbow that gets you to throw harder it's the focus on different muscles in, within your shoulder and your scaps and things like that I, I mean, AID performance physical therapy, where, you know, my clinic, um, you know, I'm always about prevention and performance. That when kids come in, I know that I can improve their velocity because, A, they've never used, they're not using their muscles back. But one of the things they're forgetting is like their core and their glutes. Mm -hmm. I remember we're doing combo exercises. We weren't just working your arm and your shoulder. I had you standing on one leg, moving, you know, a body blade or doing monster walks, mm -hmm. you know, band work and everything like that, making sure that you have the proper hip mobility because I, like I said, with the golf swing and the, and pitching is it's not just the art of putting the arm in the right place. It's the legs have to get you through there that if you don't have the proper you know, I remember I had a kid when, you know, after working with Eric Schmidt down, you know, I was working in D.C., that they had a kid that went down to Andrews, and they was like, there's nothing wrong with your elbow, and we come back and we evaluate him, and, and, and this is the way AID works, is we don't just treat the symptoms, and we say, what is the cause of the injury? And I went through a full body assessment, and I was like, hey, you're right-handed pitcher, your left hip isn't moving, so we need to get that hip moving, because that's where you plant and rotate through and this way what's happening is you're having elbow pain because you're overthrowing with your arm and i don't know um you know are you guys using video and and are you referring out to physical therapy to, to say hey these guys because i know me i've worked with a lot of quarterbacks especially I'm, I'm associated you went to broad run and i'm with you know broad run i've treated you know brady reitzel mitch griffiths brett griffiths Connor Jessup, four out of the last five quarterbacks over the last decade have all come in and I've worked, you know, probably because I've worked with you and say, hey, this worked for Connor, that I can get you throwing harder by using muscles in your new But not only that, prevents you from having, you know, arm issues. So um, what are you telling the kids as far as, you know, influencing them as, as well as are you pushing them towards physical therapy or, you know, wellness or rehab or, or you know what is what is Bagby offering to help them other than just pitching instruction um you know obviously health again coming from from my experiences is is so important right you can't you can't fulfill the goals that you want to do if you're sitting on the sidelines so um that's obviously very important to us um you know and to, to Jason over at two bags uh anyone that I work with uh, you know, making sure the preparation is there. Again, you know, I, I harp on the preparation. Um, you know, don't just get out of your car three minutes before the, the you know, the, the practice and start 
trying to throw your hardest, right? Though, though that's going to be a bad habit, and it's going to lead to bad form, and it's going to and it's going to lead to bad, you know, injuries possibly. Um, you know, a lot of kids as they're growing up, because they can get away with it when they're eight years old. As they continue to to, to get older, uh, you know, they run into issues because that the preparation isn't there. So, um, of course, you know, in the right situation, you know, we'll refer out to 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 physical therapy. Um, you know depending on the situation of course you would be my first my first call right i'm not gonna you know it better be <laughs> right exactly so um yeah you know again it, it just depends on the situation you know with what the kid is 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 feeling and and um you know and we go from there i got i got kind of two more questions that i want to hit you up with we'll talk one more thing about professional baseball and then we'll go back you've got I want to say, you know, your wife Morgan allowed you to come out here, you know, allowed. I mean, whatever. You got a, you got a son, Joe, uh, you know, a baby at home. What is your opinion on, like, with, you know, we're, we're in Ashburn. I'm a huge Nats fan. I don't know. You're probably still a Yankees fan. I'm a huge Nats fan. And a couple of years ago, you know, we won the World Series, but we made the playoffs and they shut down Strasburg after having Tommy John. What is your opinion on, you know, the baseball, you know, how do you feel? Do you feel empowered, or the baseball pitchers say that, "Hey, enough is enough. This is my elbow. This is my body. I can't do it anymore." You know, what do you think about them shutting him down in the playoffs, the first time the team, the franchise, makes it to the playoffs, and then, you know, four, I don't know how many years, four or five years later, mm-hmm. next thing you know, he's in the playoffs and he pitches. You know, he's the MVP. That is, I mean, that's such a tough question to answer. You know, I, I mean, he's he was their franchise, right? They used the first overall pick in the draft on him. Uh, of course, I'm assuming that Steven wanted to be out there and probably fought his hardest to be out there because, again, you know, that's what I think 99.9% of people would have wanted to do. Um it's a, it's a tough it's a tough situation you know in terms of arm care you know especially coming off of a surgery when you hit your innings limit what do we do I mean that that was such a unique situation I, I don't know how you you can really say what exactly should have transpired I'm glad I didn't have to make the decision <laughs> I mean kudos kudos to the Nationals as a as a uh, medical provider like kudos that say hey we know this is the most important time in franchise to be able to say hey this is an investment we need to sit you down because I know in new sports to me around here everyone's a commodity you get injured they really unless you're a super super superstar player they could care you know two sheets to the wind you're done you get injured, we got someone else that's going to be able to replace you. And, um, you know, with that being said and how high-pressured um, Ashburn is and how competitive it is, are you going to let Joe play baseball? <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope he plays baseball. Um, you know, if he doesn't want to, that's fine. You know, we'll, we'll, he'll, he'll have his own uh, dreams of his own. But, uh yeah, I definitely hope he plays baseball. I think I can, you know, give him a little bit of a, of advice from time to time. You know, I'll try and stay out of his way. But yeah, I definitely hope he plays baseball for sure. Well, I I, I really want to um, thank you for coming on and being a guest here. You are, I feel like your family. You know, we've been together for so long. Um, I think I still call you sometimes for fantasy football advice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think you haven't won, but I've won several. <laughs> maybe you. I should give be, all my good tips to you, and may, then I maybe you should be calling me for advice or something uh-huh. like that. But um, I mean, I, 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 you know, I love you like a brother. I'm, I'm so glad that I could have you on. You know, PPT with AID. I really appreciate you. Um, you know, I, I've even hired you as a financial advisor with my 529. Um, you know, if you're looking for a financial advisor, I mean, Connor, Connor's going to work hard. You saw three injuries, I mean, and made it to the majors. No one's going to work harder than that. That's the work ethic that Connor has. I mean, and, and the amazing thing was the initial time it was five days a week. And then after that, it was like two or three days in the clinic. And Connor just did it. He just did his work. And that's what he's going to do for his clients. That's what he's going to do for those kids. Um, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you coming on and being a guest. Yeah. No, I appreciate you guys having me on. Um, obviously, you know, uh, I thank you a thousand times over, you know, for, for what you did for me. Um, you know, I, I don't think there's any way I could fully repay you for that. Um, you know, maybe with fantasy football advice, I guess. <laughs> but, um, yeah, thanks for having me on and, and definitely uh, – 
you know, really had enjoyed myself. Yeah, it's not work for me. I, I love what I do and I'm very passionate um, about it, you know, at AID and, and not just me, but my, the people that I hire. It's not about us, it's about the, the brand that we have, it's the result. It's all about what you're coming in there. We're here for you, whatever your goal is, is our goal. And regardless of you see me or you see one of my other PTs, Sarah, or my, my, my trainer, Connor, it's all about it's all about you and it's not about us. I don't want the I don't want the accolades. I'm living vicariously through you and whoever else. It's it's we identify not just treat your symptoms, but you know, fix the problem and you know and it's not just it's not just arm, it's head, body, everything. We're we're holistic and um you know, I love you, man, and thank you. You know, I, 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 you know, thank you. You know, you've helped me a lot with advertising and stuff. And just be like, hey, this guy played for the Yankees. So when I when I decided to have this podcast, you know, you were at the top of the list of someone that I want to talk to. You've been great. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, man. Anytime. I mean, if you want to have me back for for round two, we can do that. You know. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it was. The, this is the Woodford talking. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. We still on here? <laughs> I thought that was great. Guys. <laughs>